Hey, TV Recap here. In today's video, we will be looking back at the movie White Chicks and its cultural importance today. So, White Chicks is an American comedy film released in 2004. It stars real-life brothers Marlon and Sean Wayans as on-screen brothers and FBI agents, Marcus and Kevin Copeland. The film received a lot of negative reviews from critics and was dubbed as one of the worst movies of 2004. But despite negative critical response, the movie was a box office hit and became a cult classic. Many people claim that White Chicks is as racist as blackface. However, I don't think it is since white actors have been putting on different faces for ages in a way to mock black people. It's not as prevalent today, but it still does happen. What's more common today is when white actors take roles that have a cultural or racial importance. Most recently, Scarlett Johansson, who played an Asian character in Ghost in the Shell. White Chicks is not perfect since there are some problematic things it did that wouldn't be accepted today. However, the movie covered sensitive social issues such as sexism and racism in a comedic way. It criticizes white culture that is detrimental to our society like elitism and racism. The movie starts with Marcus and Kevin as FBI agents, working undercover as old male Latinos looking to capture drug dealers, disguising their products as ice cream. Three dealers come in and bring in their products. Marcus and Kevin think that they got the guys after a physical commotion with the three dealers. But then the two realize that the ice cream the three are selling is real ice cream. The real drug dealers come in late and a shootout occurs. However, the real drug dealers were able to escape. Now obviously, I can't speak for Mexicans, but the brothers donning brown skin could be taken as offensive since Marcus spits out some stereotypical Spanish gibberish. However, since colorism exists in Mexican spaces, I do not think they're punching down. Their boss, Chief Elliot Gordon, comes in and threatens to fire them, but he changes his mind and gives the boys an ultimatum. The two agents need to safely escort socialite sisters, Brittany and Tiffany Wilson, to the fashion event at the Hamptons so the girls don't fall victim to a series of high-profile kidnappings. When their plane lands, the girls immediately tell the brothers that they already gave to the United Negro Fund. This is why I don't view this movie as racist to white people, since it discusses topics of white socialite elitism. On their way to a hotel, their car crashes causing the two girls to have minor scars on their nose and lips. The two ladies refuse to go to the fashion event due to these scars. In order to keep their jobs, Marcus and Kevin convince the girls to stay in the hotel and they decide to disguise themselves as the sisters. Kevin disguised as Brittany and Marcus disguised as Tiffany. We see the two FBI agents use white spray on their skin and wear blonde wigs and contact lenses to look like white ladies. And it kinda works. As the two white chicks are about to enter a hotel, white men start hitting on them until the brothers argue back in a stereotypical black way. The Wayans brothers are completely aware of their blackness and how black men are portrayed. They use this scene to show audiences how white people would react to blackness. When Sean Wayans was asked about people thinking white chicks is racist to white people, he responded with, All the punchlines are us making fun of us in situations where white folks are around. When checking in, Kevin realizes he doesn't have his ID, so he uses his white woman tears to get away with it. Karen, Lisa, and Tori are the socialites' best friends. They believe that the two FBI agents are the real Brittany and Tiffany. At the hotel, the group meet their rivals, Heather and Megan Vandergeld. Warren Vandergeld comes over and tells the FBI agents that he can't wait to see them at the white party. Chief Elliot Gordon, along with agents Vincent Gomez and Jake Harper, are also secretly monitoring the two sisters at the hotel. And the two are convinced that they are the real Wilson sisters. Pro basketball player Latrell Spencer, played by the hilarious Terry Crews, arrives at the hotel and is immediately smitten with Tiffany slash Marcus. He comments on her skin color and having a black booty. His fetishization of white women by putting them on a pedestal is very common not only in the black community, but many other ones where people use this preference to justify their fetish. Kevin develops a crush on Denise Porter, a pretty reporter from New York One News. The five go shopping to find outfits for Marcus slash Tiffany and Kevin slash Brittany. In the most iconic movie scene, the five drive and sing Vanessa Carlton's hit song, A Thousand Miles. The two fake socialites try to sing along and stumble on some of the lyrics. During the 2000s, songs like this was quintessential white people music. Tori shifts to the next song to hip-hop, which leads Marcus and Kevin accidentally saying the N-word. This gathers negative reactions from the three ladies. The three eventually sing along saying the N-word multiple times. This is very true in many friend groups without black people. People tend to say the N-word when no person of color is around listening. Upon its original release, this movie wasn't supposed to be thought-provoking or engaging, but there are some social issues that are brought up here. It relies on cheap laughs and juvenile humor, but the 
this might be why it's so successful as it subverts tropes and shocks viewers. In the mall, the group split into two. Kevin slash Brittany go with Lisa, while Marcus slash Tiffany go with Tori and Karen. Marcus has a hard time trying to find a dress that would fit him. A funny scene arises as the sales lady tries to force the clothes to fit Marcus while Marcus's wife, Gina, is on the phone. For Gina, the two sound like having sex which causes her to be paranoid that Marcus is cheating. Meanwhile, Kevin slash Brittany accompanies Lisa to the dressing room where he discovers that Lisa has major body dysmorphia. These jokes today may be taken as fat shaming, but these cheap laughs still make people laugh. After shopping, Marcus's bag is stolen by a snatcher. Marcus chases down the snatcher showing his masculine strength and agility while speaking his manly voice. And no one even suspects that he is an imposter, even Harper and Gomez who are secretly following them. The five attend the Vandergeld's annual charity auction party that night. Latrell successfully bids $50,000 to have a date with Marcus slash Tiffany. On the other hand, Kevin slash Brittany learns that Denise is attracted to rich men. Kevin and Marcus are back into their real self in their hotel room when the three girls come up knocking at their door. Kevin and Marcus quickly change back to Brittany and Tiffany. The five have a slumber party, then two bald thugs attempt to kidnap Kevin slash Brittany. Kevin single-handedly takes down the two thugs using his manly strength, then the other comes and it is revealed that the two thugs were actually male strippers hired by the girls for their slumber party. The next day, Kevin steals Latrell's clothes and pretends to be Latrell to date Denise. When Latrell picks up Tiffany for their date, he sings a thousand miles in a very goofy way. He takes Marcus slash Tiffany to the La Bella restaurant for their date, while Kevin pretends to be a valet to use Latrell's car to pick up Denise for his date. Another funny scene is when during their date, Marcus slash Tiffany intentionally tries to disappoint Latrell through classless antics such as raising his feet, biting his toenails, messy eating, and farting. But surprisingly, Latrell becomes more fond of Marcus. Meanwhile, Kevin manages to score with Denise. And on top of that, he solicits information about Ted Burton embezzling millions and Vandergeld wanted to suppress this story so he wouldn't look foolish. Elsewhere, Gomez and Harper break into Kevin and Marcus's hotel room and find suspicious evidence against the two. In a nightclub, Latrell tries to drug Marcus but instead, he is the one who gets drugged when Marcus immediately switches their drinks. Lisa, Tori, and Karen get into a dance-off against the Vandergeld sisters to the tune of Crazy in Love by Beyonce. The three girls feel defeated so Marcus and Kevin win the dance-off for the girls using their hip-hop moves. After winning the dance-off, Karen is heartbroken when Heath, her crush, chooses to side with the Vandergeld sisters. She confesses to Kevin and Marcus that Warren Vandergeld is broke and has been taking loans from her father. Kevin and Marcus realize that Warren was the mastermind behind all the high-profile kidnappings. Latrell is high on the drugs and he's dancing like a madman. His physicality as a large black man makes the scene hilarious as it's subversive and it breaks the scary black man trope. The next day, Marcus's wife, Gina, and her friend furiously barge into Kevin and Marcus's room at the Hamptons. Gina thinks that Marcus is cheating on her only to find out that Marcus is with Kevin dressed as Brittany. Gina furiously walks out of the room as she thinks that Marcus is really cheating on her. Marcus yells at her saying that she's really a man and this only makes Gina more furious. The real Brittany and Tiffany then arrive at the Hamptons to uncover the identity of their clones. Gomez and Harper see the Wilson sisters and think they are imposters. They bring the Wilsons to their secret hideout inside the Hamptons. Gomez and Harper strip down the Wilson sisters in front of Gordon and their colleagues. But it is too late. They realize that they are the real Wilson sisters and not the FBI agents. Gordon fires Gomez and Harper and he soon confronts and fires Kevin and Marcus upon learning that they are impersonating the Wilson sisters. Gordon still thinks Burton is the one doing the kidnappings and the two try to tell him it's Warren Vandergeld. Marcus blames Kevin for losing their job and potentially his wife. In the meantime, it is revealed that Heath is working for Warren Vandergeld. On their way home, Kevin learns that Warren has been laundering money through his charities. The two decide to return to the Hamptons to try to bring down Warren with the help of Gomez and Harper. The two arrive at the Hamptons disguised again as the Wilson sisters. Tori, Lisa, and Karen reveal that they had enlisted the two for the fashion show. Meanwhile, the Vandergeld sisters are furious for getting kicked out of the fashion show by the event manager, Aubrey. Karen rejects Heath, who reveals that he is not interested in her at all. To avenge Karen, Marcus gives Heath a strong punch in the face. The real Wilson sisters arrive and also walk on the runway only to cause confusion to the audience. As revenge for getting kicked out of the event, the Vandergeld sisters try to sabotage the Wilsons. Karen, Lisa, and Tori see the Vandergeld sisters on top of the scaffolding. The Vandergeld sisters end up being the victim of their own tricks, just like the movie Carrie. The real Wilson sisters arrive on the runway and uncovers Kevin and Marcus impersonating them. Warren sees this as the perfect opportunity to begin his plan of kidnapping the Wilson sisters. A Chinese dragon parade comes and incorrectly captures captures Marcus slash Tiffany and the real Brittany. Kevin chases down the kidnappers and causes a full-blown riot. The Copeland brothers get into a fist fight with Heath and Russ, the two friends recruited by Warren to help him in kidnapping the Wilson sisters. 
Gomez and Harper come by to assist the Copeland brothers. Warren captures the real Wilson sisters and reveals to his family that they are running out of money, and he has been funneling money from the charity into his private account. Denise and her cameraman try to film the whole fiasco. Warren shoots Denise, but Kevin was able to push her out of the way. Latrell is shot in the shoulder when he tries to protect Marcus slash Tiffany. Kevin takes down Warren by shooting him in the shoulder. Marcus reveals his true identity to Latrell. The audience assumes that Latrell is upset that Marcus is a man, but Latrell admits that he feels deceived because Marcus is black. He has no qualms with him being a man. Latrell reminds Marcus that this is an all-white party and calls him a jigga blank. It's satire, but there are actually black people who hate on their own. An example would be Justice Clarence Thomas of the Supreme Court, the real-life Uncle Ruckus of today. Gina and Shanice get their hands to Kevin slash Brittany thinking that she was Marcus's mistress only to find out that it was Kevin in disguise. Gordon comes by and reinstates Marcus and Kevin along with Gomez and Harper. Marcus patches things up with him and Gina while Kevin and Denise begin a romantic relationship. Latrell is delighted to be assisted by the real Wilson sisters and appears that they like him too. Tori, Lisa, and Karen reveals that they still like Marcus and Kevin despite knowing their real identity. So, the group eventually agrees to become friends and go shopping together. So that sums up the movie. In the subject of reverse racism, whether you believe in it or not, this film doesn't have anything racist towards white people, but rather the culture of elitism and racism that some white people partake in. The movie was filled with jokes on gender, race, and class, which might be a little offensive to some people. Many critics ridiculed the movie, causing it to be nominated for five Razzies, including Worst Picture. But hey, this is just a movie meant to entertain us, and I'm pretty sure you laughed while watching it. And nearly 20 years after its release, the movie is still considered a cult classic. Really interested to hear your thoughts. Until next time, bye! Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel. Thank you.